Hello, I'm George Cantonis, and I'm excited and honored to serve as the president of Hellenic College Holy Cross, the only Greek Orthodox college and graduate school of theology and seminary in the United States. The future of our parishes and our faith begins here. The message of the gospel of Jesus Christ is a revealed message. It's not something we inherently know. And if the church in America is to know what that revealed truth is, we have to teach it to them. We have a very, very important role here at our school in forming uh, men and women to serve the Lord's church. Our theological school is educating, is preparing the right people who will have all the leadership and spiritual skill set and equipment to serve the people of God. And in this sense, the theological uh, school is the source that feeds the whole body of the church and all the parishes. 80% of the priests in this country have come through Hellenic College or Holy Cross. These exist together as one school. If one is strong, the other is strong and vice versa. I was blessed uh, to go to Holy Cross. And when I went to the seminary, I had no uh, experience or knowledge really of scripture or the fathers of the church. And the school was everything. Just uh, being in this atmosphere was so unique and so blessed. by merely being at the school, prepared me in the sense that it's a microcosm of the parish life. Um, you, you have classmates, you have families, you have children that are at uh, both Hellenic College and Holy Cross, but the most important thing I would say at Holy Cross that prepares you for the parish life is the chapel itself and the services that take place in the chapel. Uh, if we were just to be plopped into a parish uh, without any of that, uh, then we would be totally lost. My education at Hellenic College Holy Cross comes into play essentially every day in my ministry as a youth director, as a pastoral assistant, and as even as a camp counselor or staff member at our archdiocese camps. I would not trade my education at Hellenic College Holy Cross for anything else. I'm the fourth generation of Magulius clergy educated and ordained in America, and all of it had a tie to Hellenic College Holy Cross. Without the theological school, we wouldn't have priests. And we all know from our own experience that if we don't have the right person to be the priest of the community, our parishes will not be successful. And not only that, every parish is the cell of the body, of the one body, which is the Archdiocese. If we didn't have Hellenic College Holy Cross, it would not be a good outcome for the Orthodox Church in America. Hellenic College Holy Cross is the lifeblood of our church. It is truly our only institution that we have that we need to support in order to keep our clergy and lay leaders educated, inspired, and it's also a place that we can go and truly see the essence of what Jesus Christ and His Church is about. And this is why we need to support Hellenic College Holy Cross. You know, I guess in every person's career, uh, if you make a, little, make a little money, you know, what can you do with it? Maybe you may feel like you know, starting to give a little bit uh, to Holy Cross and maybe visit the school and uh, start to understand why it's such an important part of orthodoxy in the world, not just in America, in the world. If we're gonna have a future for anything we care about, Orthodox Christianity, Hellenism, our unique Byzantine tradition and vision of civilization, we have got to invest in this school. It already exists. The mission of the theological school, and not only theological school, and the Hellenic College, 
promotes both the values of our national heritage, the Greek culture, and also our faith. And our school offers all of this to our faithful. Helena College Holy Cross truly is an important aspect of all of our lives that while they're praying for and preparing to serve our faithful here in America, we too as the faithful in America need to continually pray and support our school as well. The biggest opportunity for HCHC lies in the larger body of the church. We need to create opportunities for distance learning and we need to teach into the parishes through the various mechanisms that now exist for us to do that. We need to spread the message not only to those who come to the Holy Hill to study, but to the entire archdiocese and God willing to the entire church throughout the world. Let's go ahead, lift it up, put it on a, a sure footing. We're in the right place at the right time. Let's go ahead and do it. We ask you and we invite you to join us on this mission. It can be done. Helena College Holy Cross is moving forward with confidence and resolve, thanks to our incredible team. We need our faithful to join us in our efforts if we are to be successful. Speak of us to your friends, of the progress we have made, and of the good things that are happening here. Remember us in your prayers, and consider helping us financially. Join our committed faculty, administration, and staff, and together we will be successful. Good morning, everybody. Um, if there's this Cheshire Cat grin on my face, it's because I have never spoken to this many women in my life. <laughs> um, um, I was blessed with two sons who I love dearly. Uh, my wife has been the only female audience that has ever sat in front of me long enough you know, to listen. And so uh, I'm really very appreciative of both the opportunity and the uh, and the patience that you're going to extend to me for my brief comments. I am not going, your eminence, uh, your grace, Arlene, your fellow officers, uh, it really is an enormous honor for me to speak to you as the president of Helena College Holy Cross. Uh, not only to bring to you what the current status of this critical organization is, but also to thank you for the most important contribution that you have all made to um, its very survival and to help us pour the foundation of what we hope to be its future of exciting growth. The school has been described by others by reference to critical parts of the human body, backbone, blood, heart, etc. cetera. Um, I like to think of the school in a different way. Uh, our parishes, our clergy, our hierarchy, you all, you are our faith in action today, every day, every week, every year. But the future of our faith is Helena College Holy Cross. Why? Because that is where we prepare the clergy that are going to be the future of our faith, where they become formed, where they deepen and broaden their faith, where they learn to pastor, to lead their flock, where they become motivated, energized, and prepared to present our salvific faith and mission to the non-Orthodox, and where the faith can be studied and applied to the dilemmas that our society faces in the challenging world in which we live today. Watch CNN, watch Fox, read the paper. What's going on out there is absolutely incredible. And the college, it provides an early entry point for that future seminarian. And it provides an optional place of study for young people who wish to advance their educations within an orthodox environment, one of support defined by love, not by the woke culture 
that infects higher education almost endemically, not only in the US, but in most of the world today. You have been critical, as I've said, to where we are today, and I could list the contributions that you've made historically. Instead, I'd like to place some of these contributions within the overall context of where we have been and where we are today. Where were we two years, six months ago? My wife is sitting here. If you were to ask her how long I've been in this position, she would probably answer something like two years, six months, three weeks, two days, five hours, <laughs> and 27 minutes. Uh, she's been very patient. Uh, we were placed on probation, academic pro accreditation probation by the agencies for multiple issues. Financial sustainability triggered the issue, but also cited with governance, strategic planning, and enrollment. The timing was really amazing. Uh, the day I became president was the day I received the letter informing me that we were on accreditation probation. <laughs> then, two and a half months later, COVID hit. It impacted our ability to travel for fundraising, for recruitment. Uh, the Holy Cross Press was barely functional. By that time, we had accumulated $20 million in debt as the result of funding multiple years of cash flow deficits that ran into the millions of dollars each. And much of that debt was borrowed from the school's endowment. Normal processes of faculty review had come to a halt. The culture on campus was highly toxic. The relationship between board, management, the president, and the board chair was at best challenged, at worst destructive. Economic exigency was declared by the board at the request of management, which allowed for the termination of six tenured faculty. And any of you are familiar with uh, what tenure means and what the termination involves. You can imagine how pleasant an experience that was for the president who sat down with each one of them personally and walked them through the rationale and the agreements that we offered them. Uh, and to uh, add to the situation, the Maliotis Cultural Center was mired in seemingly endless litigation that had resulted in its gross deterioration physically, its lack of use, and a resulting bad reputation for the school in the greater Boston Hellenic community that held it incorrectly responsible for its demise. Update. We were released from probationary status at the first possible opportunity, which was 14 months later. By dint of extraordinary hard work by faculty, staff, and administration, and the board to address the issues that had been raised. We entered the next academic year with the technology and the training to present the 2021 year entirely remotely. With the addition and installation of a learning management system, also used by most of the colleges in the Boston community, which we accomplished in three months. As a point of reference, it took Harvard three years to install the same system. We reduced debt from $20 million to $4.9 million through contributions, major gifts, bequests, the gifts from the Greek government. This debt reduction has eliminated the need for us to sell up to 19 acres of real estate that was not currently used by the school. We're completing our third year of positive cash flow, again due to fundraising efforts and the continuing support of Leadership 100, the $3.5 million subsidy that we receive each year from the Archdiocese, the support of Philoptochos, both in scholarships and support of investments that we've made recently in technology. To assist in the effort to improve culture, to get to know the students better, the president moved into married student housing. The dean of students lives next door. Next to him is the dean of the School of Theology, and then space for the future full-time dean of the college and quarters for his eminence. We've been approved to continue remote classes due to the support, again, of Philoptochus, to itemize, 
$130,000 went into classroom tech upgrades. $80,000 of your contribution went into Wi-Fi wiring and server connectivity to the entire campus. $50,000 went into new Chromebooks for all full-time faculty. $15,000 went into new licenses and software. We've begun to offer and have been approved by the agencies to offer the MTH degree totally online. It's the first degree that we can offer on a totally online basis. Without the technologies that you helped us install, that would not have been possible. We have begun continuing education with our clergy with a weekly Bible study to assist them with their Sunday sermons and will add to that in the coming year with sessions on timely pastoral issues confronted by our clergy, again, in the challenging environment in which we all live. And the Maliota Center, whose control was regained by the school as a result of a courthouse step settlement, has been brought back to life physically and has become the center, literally, of Hellenic culture in the Boston community, holding not only current local events and activities, but also potential national and international classical events and historical artistic exhibits. The press is now thriving. Philoptuchus $97,000 funding critical to its revival. The Greek Orthodox Quarterly Review is back in print. The Office of Student Life is revitalizing student engagement, spiritual formation, and with the assistance of the Maliota Center, bringing student activities to a level not seen perhaps in the history of the school. Relationships between the board, its committees, the management team, the chair, his eminence, and the president are positive and constructive. Proper procedures are being instituted after years of dormancy in faculty and tenure review. Our tenure accreditation review is in process. Uh, and uh, we are optimistic, given the initial feedback of drafts, uh, that uh, it will be well received by the agencies. We'll be hopefully receiving our tenure accreditation. By the way, that's a normal cycle that every college uh, that's fully accredited goes through. Scholarship support's being expanded with contribution from the faithful and continuing scholarship support from you all. But major challenges remain. First and foremost is enrollment. We were at only 104 full-time equivalent students last year. This year, we hope to be at 115 to 120. Our plan pre-COVID had been 135 to 150 by this point in time. College enrollment will be up with an entering class estimated at almost 20 as against 14 last year. We should be at about 43 total college students. We will have 29 new Holy Cross students. The total SOT will be approximately 74 to 77. Of those in the School of Theology, 38 will be seminarians. There were 39 last year. There were 44 the year before that. The total number of new students we will have matriculating to the school is 48. That is a very high percentage of the total enrollment. It's one of the issues that the school has in terms of feeding its growth. We need 40 to 50 students every year to stay even. But if we are going to get to the 210 students in the next two years, which is our goal ultimately, that's something that we must achieve. The numbers are clearly inadequate. They will not allow the faith to sustain itself, let alone to thrive. We're finally able, with COVID abating, and camps, events, clergy laities, and other meetings that are beginning to occur with normal activity and regularity, been able to do the kind of recruiting we've not been able to do for almost two and a half years. But as we build that enrollment base, which will take a few years, we will continue to need the level of financial support that we've received in the last three years to present the quality of the institution that is necessary to serve the faithful, to educate our clergy, and to continue to study the faith again as it relates to the reality of the world we live in today. But how we've made the progress we have in this reasonable short period of time, 
It's certainly been greatly due to the support such as yours, leadership, our diocesan funding, and the leadership of others. But it's also very much about team. And team has been critical to bringing Helena College Holy Cross to where it is today. Higher education is a very complicated and very regulated industry. We literally report to five different agencies that can close us down. Five. The amount of time, energy, and resources we spend on keeping on top of these regulations is awesome. And it's important for us to acknowledge that the reason that we have made this progress is greatly due to the women in leadership positions at our school that we have been so successful. Our Vice President of Academic Affairs, otherwise known as a provost, outs a provost outside of uh, the New England area, Dr. Diana Dimitrulius. Our Board Chair of Academic Affairs Committee, Catherine Yotrakis. Our Board Chair of Institutional Advancement, Helen Carlos. Our just past treasurer, Joanne Mitchell. Our Finance Director, Helen Goltzos and our executive director of what I refer to now as the new Maliotis Cultural Center, Presitera Chrysula Kukundi, who is here. Presitera, if you stand for a second, just to be acknowledged. Uh, without these women in these leadership positions, we'd have been dead in the water. And that's not an exaggeration of any way, in any way, shape, or form. I'm honored to be able to acknowledge the enormous contribution uh, that these women have made to our progress, but that does not mean that there are other opportunities that must be addressed. We need more board members that are women. We need input from you all in the ways we can serve Orthodox women in a more relevant manner. You've been very generous and supportive of this institution, as you have of many, but we need to ask you what we need to be addressing that is not being addressed adequately in terms of not only your organizational needs, but your individual needs and your faith needs. We look forward to discussing these issues with you. We look forward to begin to start working with you, not just receiving your generous support. And in closing, I want to make clear something to you, and that is that only through this kind of engagement, the school beginning to look outside of itself, that the school will begin to be successful and the school will really thrive. Because if the school doesn't thrive, it just remains in existence. It will fail in its mission at the end of the day. There's a saying in business that if you're not growing and changing, you're dying and you don't know it yet. That's as true of any educational institution, any faith institution, just about any institution that you can think of at the end of the day. Positive change is a continuing process. We don't get to a point and say, we're done. That can't happen. We've got to continue to look forward. We need to continue to fulfill need. Uh, I want to make the observation that my board, my board chair, His Eminence, the Archbishop, have been as cooperative and supportive of these efforts as I can possibly imagine. Your own leadership has been as receptive as, as they could possibly be. Uh, we want to work with you all more closely than we have in the past. And uh, I want to uh, make something very clear, please. Transparency is a very important part of where we felt we needed to start with and that needed to stay part of our culture. And so as part of that, I'm gonna we're gonna launch into a Q&A period right now. And, and I'd like to say something very clearly. A, there are no embarrassing questions, okay? B, hard questions are a lot of fun for me. 
And so I'm hoping that the amount of, the amount of uh, allotted time is really taken up by, uh, by questions that come from all of you, not only in terms of what I said, but what was on the video. But before I do that, I do have to do one last thing, and that is uh, thank my wife. <laughs> Uh, we kind of split resp volunteer responsibilities. I do the church thing and she does everything else. <laughs> and so when it comes to the Museum of Fine Arts and the orchestra and the Performing Arts Center, et cetera, in the Tampa Bay area, if they need something, they pick up the phone and they call Maria. Um, uh, so Maria, thank you, honey, for everything that you've allowed me to do. So with that, I don't know if you have microphones that are walking around. Uh, great. In each aisle. So I am more than happy to throw open the floor to questions. And if you don't come up with any, I'll invent some. <laughs> please. And please identify yourself and where you're from. Hi, Elaine Cetus from the metropolis of Boston, past president of the Volunteer Women of Hellenic College. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so at our last national board meeting, <clears throat> you talked about the monetization of some land from the campus. And I'm wondering what the status of that is, please. Uh, we were fortunate enough to receive, excuse me. Uh, we were fortunate enough to receive um, a, a very generous contribution from Michael Huffington uh, to the tune of about two and a half million dollars that he wanted directed to the development and the formation of the Huffington Ecumenical Institute. That two and a half million dollars was matched to the proceeds of an estate that had been left to the archdiocese uh, that was to be spent for educational purposes. That five million dollars left us $400,000 short of paying off the mortgage on the Barletta property. The Barletta property was an eight acre piece of that 19 acres uh, the mortgage of which was strangling us. Um, I was able to approach another donor who uh, redirected funds, so the $5.4 million mortgage was paid off approximately 10 days ago. And so... And so the, uh, uh, the 19 acres has been pulled from the marketplace uh, because we're hoping that as we continue to grow, there are going to be opportunities for us to actually be able to use the property ourselves. That would obviously be our dream. Yes. Yes, ma'am. My name is Theodora Serio. I am um, from New Jersey, St. Barbara Church. I'm the Philoptokos president there. But I am also a professor at Georgian Court University. Uh, it's a, it was a Catholic college run by the Sisters of Mercy. Uh -huh. And we had, uh, it was all girls, mm -hmm. and a few years ago, they started the process of changing and going co-ed and growing. They introduced sports, they gave scholarships, and we are slowly growing. I am starting my doctorate in higher education in September, and I'm happy to help any way I can and take what we've done at the university mm -hmm. and give you any information or help to market hold across across the nation and get more enrollment. Um, our Greek Orthodox youth uh, needs to realize there's another option and a place to go. And that's the message, you know, I, I'm willing to help you any way I can, but uh, you need to grow your marketing efforts and sure. get the message across to everyone. So. Yeah, break. Thank you. Uh, there are aspects of Hellenic College, Holy Cross, that make it the best kept secret in Orthodoxy, okay? In spite of our best efforts. And um, just to give you an idea of how frustrating it can be, uh, and the clergy will forgive me for this, uh, but I think it's something that needs to. No, yeah, yeah, right. No. Actually, it's not been the hierarchy. It's not been the hierarchy. We decided that the most direct path 
and most efficient path to the faithful was through our clergy. Okay? So we put together a series of emails that included either information, they included videos, not like this, but, but other videos that were more educationally oriented, we sent them out. And we have software that tracks what happens to these emails. Um, the first set of emails that were sent out, 45% were opened at all. And of the 45%, only 30 opened the attachments, which meant less than 15%. So we get the data back, and I'm sitting there scratching my head, and I'm thinking, okay, who was the sender? Well, the sender was just Helena College Holy Cross. I said, okay, let's send it again, and let's make it the office of the president, Helena College Holy Cross. 45% went to 50, and the 30 didn't move. And so I thought, filled with the amount of hubris that I have, I said, mm, George Cantonis is the sender. Okay, well, my ego is shattered because <laughs> it didn't do a thing. <laughs> and so, you know, that's one of the problems we have is piercing through this fog of misinformation, disinformation, and simple lack of knowledge. That's one of the reasons why travel is so important and us being able to get back on the road because it's not just the president that's traveling, it's going to be the dean of students that's going to be traveling, it's going to be Father George Persenios, who's the dean of the School of Theology and, and our professor of, uh, of New Testament, who's a fantastic speaker, who's going to be going to the Sindismos meetings because the people we need to, to get through to first are the people who we really believe are our second most important constituency. Our most important constituency are obviously the kids, clearly. But our second most important constituency are clergy at the end of the day for two reasons. Number one, they are our most important recruiters. Okay? But number two, they need a lot of help right now because they're getting buried. Okay? We don't have enough priests. Large parishes are losing their second priest. We have deacons that are filling sm small mission parishes because of the fact that there are not enough clergy out there. And simply the crises that every proestamino is dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis is almost overwhelming. So continuing education to our clergy is a very important part of what we want to be doing. To give you an example, what we've already begun is a weekly Bible study for clergy only by Father George, who's a New Testament professor, to give them a head start on their Sunday sermons. We want to do the same thing with pastoral. Did I mention that already in my speech? I think I did, okay. I've, I've said this so many times that I listen to myself talking sometimes. Um, that kind of outreach is critical. The next step, actually, once we feel we're dealing with that adequately, is to make courses, podcasts, et cetera, available to our faithful because our faithful are thirsting for knowledge of their faith that to this point in time, they don't have. There, there, are, four, there, there are four issues of liturgy that I've come to the conclusion uh, th that exist. There's sight, four S's. Sight, sound, and scent. And everybody goes to church, all three of those get filled. There's a fourth S, that's substance. For many of our faithful, that substance isn't there. And we talk a lot about educating our youth. We do. But if their parents aren't going to church, what kind of effect are we going to have with the youth? And so that's not to say, please don't misquote me or misunderstand me, that we don't work with our youth. But I think it's really very, very critical that our adult faithful understand why is the church shaped the way it is? Why does the liturgy progress in the form that it does? Guess what? There's a parallel to both of those, to the development of faith and the functioning of the human body, quote unquote, um, uh, Maximus the Confessor. There are nuggets of knowledge that if they were out there, our faithful would have a much deeper understanding of what they were doing at church on Sunday. And if they don't have that, how are they going to pass that on to their kids? Look, we all went to church because my parents went to church. I was altar boy for 12 years because Yaya was sitting out there. Okay? That doesn't work anymore, folks. 
and if we don't develop a deeper understanding amongst our faithful, uh, then five years from now, 10 years from now, what we're trying to do at Helena College Holy Cross isn't gonna make any difference. And, and that's a responsibility we feel. And that's part of what we think to be our obligation, not only to improve what's happening internally, but begin to become a source externally. Okay? Schools have a tendency to focus on their own navels too much. And we can't do that anymore. We've got to start reaching out. That's a big part of what our vision needs to be. Any other questions? Oh, this is way too easy. <laughs> yes, Anita. I'll repeat, how competitive is the undergraduate college? If I look in Barron's, where do I find it? Oh, low. You would find it low. And it's really very interesting because of the fact that the average grade point average of somebody coming into Helena College is 3.2. The average grade point average of somebody going into the School of Theology is 3.5. You can come into Helena College, Holy Cross, take classes at Boston College. Our tuition is 20, theirs is 65. If you're in the School of Theology, you can take classes at Harvard because we are part of the Boston Theological Institute. You can come for a semester tuition free, semester of faith. These are the things that we keep trying to pound out out there and communicate to the faithful. And we're just having difficulty getting through the fog. You know, I don't think a full page ad in the New York Times is gonna get us anywhere, okay? So it's got to be by word of mouth. But you're right, that's a big issue out there is that the reputational issues that follow us uh, you know, have been really very difficult. Being on probation is not a popular thing to have to explain away to parents, but that's long past history. We have a shocking number of professors that either have Ivy League PhDs or are teaching at Ivy League colleges right now. Right. Our average class size is very, very small and very personal. Yeah, Anita, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just amazed that the um, junior colleges, community school, have gotten their message of two plus two across very, very well, and they seem to have growth. Uh, the tuition at Hellenic College is um, reasonable. It is. And, and you would say, well, is there not a way that we could get people through the door, and then I bet they would stay once they got there. But you know, parents, I hate to use the word package, but very often they're packaging their high school students to get into the best school possible. And so then they look at a guide, and unless you have something to overcome that classification, mm -hmm. and maybe that, the, the way you overcome it is, do two years with us and two years someplace else then, because that's definitely better than going to your local community college. Yeah. It's just the idea of a two year the idea of a two year degree has come up. Right now what we're doing is trying to push the whole semester of faith. A lot of kids are taking gap years. Okay? Not necessarily going straight to college, not necessarily going straight to graduate school. So the whole idea of being able to attend Hellenic College or Holy Cross for a semester tuition free. No other commitments, it's tuition free, just room and board is something that, is, that we're trying to hit harder because it touches exactly on this issue. Come and see an experience. Then go ahead and make your decision. Yes, ma'am. I want to thank you for up the update that I was unaware. I'm wondering if there's any way we can get something like that that we can show. Because when we pass our tray, you know, people might throw in something. But a week before we know we're going to pass the tray, if we present something like this to wake up everybody, I really think it would increase the... Okay, I, I will saying. take that as a formal request by a Philoptochos member of the president <laughs> to share with me your email list. So I, it'll go out on Tuesday. It'll show, it'll I will be shown in my, you, yeah, okay. on Tuesday it'll be out. Okay, thank you. No, no, one, one moment. <laughs> as I said, could you please identify who you are and where? Okay. Could you please identify who you are and where you're from? Barbara Bambakis from Richmond, Virginia, uh, Metropolis of New Jersey, Philip was president. Good. And looking to re rejuvenate everybody's interest in all of our programs. But this, to me, is really eye-opening, and I think it would inspire people more. And, and we it's very can, well and, done. And, you know, and, and, and 
consultation with George and we, we talk all the time. Um, the reality is we can also, we can do that, get that video, but the reality is the video was created for this purpose. So, you know, that doesn't mean we will stop there, okay? There's other media that we can get to you that you can use that is more focused in the areas that we're talking about today. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to find out. Just showing, I don't know if everybody thinks that I'm not gonna be a priest, that's not even, a, but if they show, if, if, you, if we could see everything like that in action, I think it's really We're actually going to be doing a, a, a video that talks to graduates of the SOT and graduates of Helena College that went into business. Um, some young women in particular that have been amazingly successful in careers not only in the United States but in Europe. Uh, and um, it's, it, it is, again, there are biases in their presumptions that it, it almost, we seem to come to the conclusion that unless we have an opportunity to personally make these kinds of presentations, it just doesn't get through. All right. We're trying, and, and distributing videos is a great help. Thank you Thank for you. that idea. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Marty Driscoll, Metropolis of Atlanta, Marietta, Georgia. I just wanted to ask about the Crosswords program. Is it still in effect? And if oh, yeah. so, just what's happening with it? Uh, Crossroad is still in effect. Their, their uh, offices are on campus. Ann Bezaridis and I talk on a regular basis. Um, she talks about the school. I talk about Crossroad. Um, technically, legally, they are a separate entity, uh, and they've been organized as a separate entity. Um, it was felt that from an organizational perspective, from a legal perspective, and from an insurance perspective, it was in both groups' best interests. But that doesn't change the relationship at all. Anne is still on faculty. Uh, we talk on a regular basis. Uh, we just finished a crossroad, um, one of two crossroads that are going to be at Brookline. And as I recall, there are two more. There's one in California, and I think there's one in Chicago. Okay. Thank you. Chicago, right. Yes, ma'am. Stephanie Storch in Poplis, um, Memphis, Tennessee, Detroit Metropolis. Um, I've heard you speak before when you spoke to our Metropolis uh, clergy laity mm -hmm. um, virtual meeting a while ago. I hope I, I wasn't too repetitive. No, sir. <laughs> um, I've been in academic medicine my whole career, um, and it is uh, remarkable that you were able to come off probation so quickly. Um, I'm the chair of the PA program at UT uh, Health Science Center in Memphis, Tennessee, in addition mm. to my clinical work, and I know how hard that is. I commend you also for pl putting in place all of the, the essential uh, people that overlook the teaching and those who are being taught. Um, with the addition of students being able to go to other colleges in your area, what other degrees are available to those students? And you know, we know in academics that women are exceeding men in their um, uh, applications and in, in uh, classes. And a lot of young women you hear if their friend goes to Hellenic College is they want to become a presbytera. And that is admirable. However, I think that that is not the reason that most young women go to Hellenic College. Um, and how competitive are the students to go to a graduate degree, be it in law or medicine or business? That's one of the issues that we're gonna be putting on video. Uh, and that's something that we're tracking data-wise much more, much more carefully. I can assure you that when we got there, the kind of infrastructure that was available to collect this kind of data, use this kind of data, didn't exist. I mean, there was this great big hole where all of this should have been. And um, uh, I'm not sure how that happened, I'm not sure why it happened, but it was one of the reasons we were put on probation. And now all of those mechanisms are in place. We have a full-time research associate that is tracking the, uh, this amongst other things. Once we can get some hard data underneath us, uh, we want to give, uh, you know, we want to go ahead and make that public. But we do know that, that quite a number of our students, uh, female and male, male who don't go on to the seminary, are going on to do graduate work. And is the, um, is the college listed on the FAFSA form? I'm sorry, say that again? So the federal um, uh, application for financial aid. Yeah, yeah standard app. And it is, is it listed it's on It's on the that? standard app. Okay, thank yes. you. Yes, ma'am. I'm going back and forth. Yeah. 
Good morning, and first and foremost, Mr. Cantonas, thank you for being here today and representing That's us. That's my pleasure. And everything you've done for the, the college. Uh, my name is uh, Patty Tsausis from the uh, metropolis of Atlanta, um, uh, Tarpon Springs, Florida. And I had two questions. Of the enrollment, how many of the students are converts that we are aware of? Because uh, I think that's a big yeah. impact. Yeah, uh, we haven't done that poll undergraduate. Okay. In the graduate school, and Your Grace, you can help me, I would guess that of the seminarians, it's almost 40%, yeah. maybe 50. 45, I would say 50, 50. Yeah, yeah it's almost 50 50 of the seminarians are converts. So, in correlation with how many converts that we have in the faith, I think that's probably a good area of maybe concentration to get the message out and things like that. Um, but also, I, I think what would be a good challenge for us to maybe consider as a philoptikos is, and I know we have many commitments, we have many uh, uh, requirements of philoptikos, but maybe what we can do in conjunction with the free tuition that you guys are offering, maybe on a metropolis level, we can raise, by metropolis, the funds to pay for the first year of, of um, room and board so that it's free for the potential student, because I think that's a great way to really get the word out, because if parents hear it's free, you don't, you know, and really come and explore the college, that might be something that may open potential doors. One of the things that we're actually working on is some areas of, of specialty in the college that really fit within the overall mission of the school and the church, for example. If you've read lately, uh, my own alma mater, Princeton, got rid of the requirement of knowing Greek and still be a classics major, right. which is the most bizarre thing I've ever heard of. Uh, it's ridiculous. There are areas that I believe are congruent with our overall mission that we can develop strength in a niche because we are a niche school, yes. okay? Mm -hmm. We're never gonna be Brandeis, okay? We're never gonna be a manual. We're never gonna be Boston College. But there are areas that we can strengthen that are universal in interest. When you take a look at the American School of Classical Studies and the Gennadios Library that I'm on the overseers of, there is not, I take it back, there are four Greeks on the board. All the rest are American intellectuals, academics, and families mm -hmm. for whom the classics they understand to be an underpinning of Western civilization, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, uh, psychology and Human Development is a very strong department that we have. We have a new director of that department. Mm -hmm. So as we strengthen individual departments and become more national in, 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 in reputation, and we are going to be using our relationship with the American School of Classical Studies in Greece. For those of you who don't know, half of the digs in, in Greece, ancient digs, the most famous one is the Agora by the Parthenon, mm -hmm. is not run by the Greek government, it's run by this institution. The okay. digs at Corinth, which are probably the second largest digs that are going on, again, are not run by a Greek institution. They're run by the American School of Classical Studies. Um, they are one of the most highly res respected classics institutes in the world. And we are developing relationships with them. We're developing relationships with the Benaki Museum. Uh, we are developing relationships with the University of Athens, with the, with the, the uh, Aristotle University, because they can help us accelerate, okay, mm -hmm. the elevation of the perception of our quality, okay, mm -hmm. in areas that are internationally important. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about Greek cooking or dancing, okay? Right. We're talking about right. classical issues. Okay. But thank you. Hello. I'm short, sorry. Um, my question comes, I'm Stella Fisfis mm -hmm. from the Metropolis of New Jersey, president of uh, Elkins Park Church Annunciation. My question falls under the simple one. How have the dorm rooms and that cafeteria been renovated during all of this um, change? Because we have taken our goy up and the boys and the tour, and that might be something that might give it a little bit more push, if you will. But. That's a very timely question. Um, we are in the process of repainting the dorm, putting new flooring in the dorm, putting some air conditioning units in some of the common lobby areas, and generally fixing up the dorm. 
Um, I, I do have to tell you one of the things I find ironic, just as a personal uh, thing. All the rooms are basically in the dormitory set up as singles. Okay? When I was at Princeton, two of us would have been in one of those rooms. And so when I walked into one of these rooms the first time, I thought, what are they complaining about here at the end of the day? But they needed to be touched up. The bathrooms are going to be redone. Uh, uh, we are working on all of that. The cafeteria. Sorry? The cafeteria. The cafeteria has actually been chipped away at. The kitchen is actually a new kitchen two years ago. And um, we do have to work on our fasting diet. Our, 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 I, our fasting diet at the cafeteria is, I'm sorry, truth and transparency, the transparent president. Our the fasting food that we serve is terrible. And we just got to, <laughs> you know, we're, we're getting some of the Ayadas recipes, okay, for fasting periods that we're going to start serving there. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Dina Tortorellas, um, Chicago Diocese from Minneapolis, St. Mary's um, Church. I have two kind of comments or suggestions. One is um, with email, I, I think a lot of people just kind of ignore emails, obviously, from you know, what you found. I'm just wondering if you have like a Twitter or an Instagram, because that's where the kids are really looking. Um, they don't really look at emails. Um, just wondering if that's something that you guys have developed, number one. Yeah, as, as a matter of fact, um, uh, Twitter and Instagram, well, starting with Facebook and then evolving to Twitter and Instagram, uh, is something that the school basically has gone to school on because of what Presbytera Crisula has done with Maliotis. She is an absolute social media, f I'm sorry, I take this in the right way, freak. She's amazing. <laughs> Um, when she's not working, she's on her phone and she's entering things. And basically, we've gone to school on her. And the trend in, when I said that the trend in applications for the college is up, it's counter-historical. In other words, our applications should have been drifting off much more quickly if you take a look at what the normal patterns are. And in point of fact, they didn't. And the only thing that really changed during that period of time that we were able to do was social media's impact. And so we know that it's very real, and uh, we have a much greater presence than we have in the past. Uh, we received what I consider to be almost the ultimate in-house compliment from Presbytera when she said she's got to catch up with what the school is doing now. And so um, it is a very important part of outreach because that's what the kids are watching these days, and it's a huge emphasis of our, our strategy. Um, and my second comment was I'm also the um, church school director. Yes. So I'm wondering, I know we talked about like maybe developing another video. Um, I don't know if you would, maybe a possibility would be to make a short video and show it to like the 10th or 11th graders. Um, I know in our, uh, we have 11th and 12th together and they spend at least a couple Sundays talking about how do you pick what college you go to, you know, is there an Orthodox church nearby? if it was like a 10 minute or something to um, tell kids, you know, and send it out to all the church school directors or youth directors so that they can be sure that these kids are seeing that and thinking that this is a possibility as well. Actually, it's an interesting idea that you're, you're, you're talking about making it more grade specific. And that's really an interesting approach. I've made a note of that, thank you. Um, Helena Papadopoulos Johnson, Metropolis of Denver, Annunciation Cathedral, Houston, Texas. Um, actually, my comments were very, very similar to the lady there. Um, I was wondering if the, the information that you shared about tuition and um, accessibility to other schools nearby was very attractive to me. I'm the mother of a recent college graduate, and I have a, a rising sophomore in high school. And that information presented to the parents of this age group would be very, I think, it would catch a lot of attention. Getting it to them is the question. So if you do it the way she mentioned, yeah. in, in the Sunday school classes and potentially the Greek schools have presentations and not just maybe more presentations to the parents at the Greek school uh, presentations or whatever, I think you would have a, uh, an audience there that would be very receptive to a lot of this. Oh, by the way, that leads me to a question. Your Grace, do you have separate contact information for the Sunday school leaders? They'll just all go through clergy. You do? Okay, then that may be something that we may try doing if we can access them directly. Yes? My name is Nellie Logothetidis. I'm a, uh, my church is the Holy Trinity Archdiocese Cathedral in Manhattan. Uh, I have a question to the ladies on this board. 
How many of you have heard of the first theological school in Pomfret, Connecticut in the early 40s? Put your hands up. Look, nobody ever talks about it. And this bothered me because my uncle was one of those students and he died a few years ago at 100 years old. Father George Poulos, Father Papa Zez, some of the most wonderful priests in America. And it's sad that nobody ever talks about it. I think that uh, the history is a valid point. If you take a look at the video uh, that's in the historical section, uh, that's on the eighth floor. Yeah, the centennial, the centennial video, you'll see that that's addressed. Um, uh, w with all due respect to the issue of, of history, and, and your comments are really very valid at the end of the day, I have to tell you the last two and a half years have been ones of survival. And if it wasn't for the fact that you all as a group joined other people to help us, there wouldn't have been a history to talk about. Now, I appreciate your comment, and I think it needs to be reintroduced, and I think it's a valid per perception on your part, and I appreciate you uh, sharing that with me, and uh, I will make sure that we spend more time honoring those that went before us. I Father would... John Hondras, who was, I was an altar boy and under we, for 12 we years. Loved him Sorry? Presbytera Cantonis is. Uh, not Presby, uh, not Mrs. Cantonis. I'm talking about uh, Presbyteria Papas. Oh, Papas, yeah. Her yes. Her husband, her right. husband is in the church uh, uh, in Stamford, Connecticut. Right. And he was an altar boy for my uncle in St. Louis, Missouri. Yes. And it's always wonderful to hear about these these priests that started us in into the, because I had the pleasure of meeting Athena Gordas when I was a little girl. And I'm very proud to say it, because he was a very special man. Well, Thank listen, you. Father, yeah, Father John Hondras, as I said, those of you from St. Andrews of Chicago know, he's part of the reason that I'm here. Yes, ma'am. Catherine Coates of Metropolis of Detroit. Yes. Some years ago, uh, Holy Cross yes. had a program where the seminarians would uh, travel. travel and speak to different uh, churches with regard to the school. Is that program going to be reintroduced? Yeah, let me tell you what happened to that. Uh, <laughs> because I, I get that question a lot. That was really effective every Sunday. The problem was the other six days of the week uh, and the cost of, every, of, of the kids traveling for that period of time. So. When they were someplace that they had an audience, they were very impactful. The problem was it was only 13% of the time. And so when you did the math, it just really didn't make a lot of sense. So now what we're trying to do is that when there are metropolis philoptochos uh, uh, meetings, when there is a metropolis clergy laity meeting, when there are these larger gatherings, putting a group together and going to attend those. Okay, because now we end up having a much greater impact, even though the cost of flying, et cetera, might be higher, the cost per touch, if you will, of, of the people that are being involved is much, much lower. And so I think that's what we're gonna be returning to once we get into scheduling for the fall. What, yes? one, one of the, before Valine, one just one second. So a couple things. One, Nelly, to answer your question, we'll be looking at all the videos to, to see which ones are the most appropriate. To Kat, Catherine, along with Maria Logos, and several of us had gone out, and George knows this, to present to Hellenic College Holy Cross. Actually, we presented in the Maliota Center before it was reinvigorated, you know. But, but the reality is we need to, but COVID hit, okay, and those things stopped. Our intention is to go back, to go back, and to, to um, one of the things we've discussed is actually teaching classes and having philoptochos because they come out, and Jeannie and I had talked about that as well. You know, going in and teaching classes so that they understand, you know, what impact philoptochos has. You go, go ahead, go ahead. Just to um, attach myself to what Arlene just said, you know, I, I'm looking out and seeing all these eager, very eager, women uh, that are very interested 
in supporting the school. And we are going to do a little traveling and not only teach the seminarians a little bit more about philoptos, but to reach out to the women in the school and, and embrace them. Because sometimes, you know, the presbyteras that come out of the school have no idea of what to expect in a parish. So we're going to try to go into the school. But I challenge each of you, especially the Metropolis presidents, to have some type of fundraiser in your, in your church or Metropolis level. Also, adopt a student. Get to meet the seminarians, the students, the women that are at the school. I think that is so important. And I find myself going to the school every year, and this was my first year back since COVID, and I really don't see any of your faces there. So I really encourage you to visit the school, embrace the students, get to know them. It's the most beautiful place on the hill. So if you're not talking about it in your churches and your chapters, if you're not doing a little fundraising, if you're not trying to adopt a student, then why are we here? So, you know, George, you, you have moved uh, mountains, <laughs> truly moved mountains. And we were always proud of the school, but we're even more so now. To you. To you. Well, I, I appreciate that very much, but I do want you to understand something, and that is that, that the school is not a one-man job by any stretch of the imagination. One of the problems with the way that it was looked at in the past is it was seen that way. Okay? The success of the school has been driven by the team. Uh, uh, the women that I mentioned, plus others, uh, the people who are attending at the, at the booth today. Uh, comment number one. Comment number two, uh, again, Jeannie, thank you, because you, you, you triggered something. One of the things we suffer from is no alumni. Princeton has a, a re reunion from my class back in the Stone Age, 1970, okay? And 300 people show up, one class, okay? 300 people to show up at a reunion is over a decade, you know, of our alumni. That's why we need you all, okay? Because we don't have the alumni numbers out there to do the talking about the school that Jeannie is talking about. And so that's another reason why we need your help. Yes, ma'am, last question. I think I'm running out of time. Okay. I'm, I'm here to have a fundraiser. How many women are in this room today? Could you identify yourself? Oh, I'm back, sorry. I'm Bowling Georgia. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And I'd like to have a, a flash fundraiser right in this room. Everybody in this room's got $20 in the wallet. Let's pass a hat. It's not going to build you a building. But you know what? It, you're going to walk out of here with more than you walked in with. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, before you get started. All right, before, before we get into the fundraising where I'm going to exit stage left. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, first, I'm going to thank you. Second, I'm going to say we take checks, credit card, money orders. <laughs> and if you have a piece of paper and you want to leave us 10% of your estate and sign it, you can leave that too. But, but before we get into that, because I know I'm running over time, thank you all for the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you all for your continuing support. Have a good day. Bye-bye.